COVID-19 has accelerated the pace of digital transformation across most of India's end user industries. Witnessed in the growing size of investment, more complex technology converges use cases and the prioritization of enterprise scale data and cloud strategy. Hello everyone. Welcome to another edition of Tech Talks with NASCOM Insights. This is the seventh and final roundtable discussion we are having on the recently launched NASCOM Strategic Review Report FY 2022. In the Strategic Review Report, NASCOM introduced the TechScope framework, a kind of maturity model in place to enable the industry to be better prepared to take on the future advancements. To discuss more on the in and out of the TechScope framework and what it means, I am joined today by my fellow panelists, Namita Jain, Research Practice Lead Digital Transformation, Bandev Ghosh, Senior Analyst Artificial Intelligence, and Vandana Babu, Senior Analyst ERND. Welcome Namita, Bandev, Vandana to this insightful discussion over the TechScope framework. Thank you. Thank you. Let us start today's discussion with Namita and understand what is TechScope framework and its themes. Sure, Naman, uh, and thanks for having me on this discussion. TechScope framework is a very interesting first of its kind approach that NASCOM is taking towards conveying to the end user organizations of where they should focus their digital investments. You know, uh, now let me set a little bit of a background as to why we came out with this idea. We've seen a lot of uh, different ways that global organizations, uh, a lot of global research and advisory organizations uh, typically use to talk about technology, the maturity, the time frame by when these technologies will be mainstream. For example, uh, you know, the gardeners and the foresters of the world, and those are very, very valuable. Uh, when we looked at the Indian context, uh, uh, you know, and as we have been expanding our work in the end user community side, what we realized was that more than individual technologies, companies are really looking at solving problems. For example, a steel manufacturer wants to understand quality, right? And they want to have real time feedback on what is happening with the steel rolls that are coming out. Uh, maybe every minute so that they can really arrest the problem of um, ineffective or inadequate quality. Now, how do they do that using technology? So that's a business problem or an operational or a tactical problem that they want a technological solution to. And that's really where the genesis of the idea of TechScope was, which is to give various organizations, irrespective of the size or the scale, but across sectors, a view into what would be very important as well as uh, impactful for them uh, to take on in this decade. Now, the way we have looked at it is three things, right? Um, three important things. One, the solution is really a package of a set of technologies that will converge together. So there's a lot of digital technologies each and every solution will encompass. For example, um, shared mobility or micro mobility, you know, unified electric vehicle platforms, EV platforms, or omni-channel customer experience, direct to consumers. Uh, if we talk about waste to energy, most of these themes that you think about have a lot of different kinds of digital technologies, even technologies that might be in the experimental stages that are still forming, uh, that will converge to eventually give out a mature solution. And most important, we are nowhere saying that all of these solutions are mature already. Uh, what's important to note is these are impactful solutions. They impact not only a particular company in a sector, but they have broader ecosystem impact. They probably have a lot more uh, economic impact uh, when it comes to India's GDP. So the impact is pretty strong, which also tells us that a lot of these solutions will evolve as we go three years, five years, 10 years down the line. So that's one. The second is, as I mentioned, the time frame. We're looking at uh, anywhere between near term, uh, in the sense three years, uh, to 10 years. Uh, we could have taken a longer uh, view, maybe 20, 25 years, uh, but we've, we've seen how technology uh, shapes up uh, really quickly and how it disrupts. So, uh, you know, uh, probably the bigger focus, uh, you know, as we go forward would be on three year and five year timeframes. 
and how those solutions shape. Uh, what happens to some of the solutions that were really critical, uh, you know, in the next uh, uh, versions of the TechScope framework. So this is the first one that we've launched, and we really look forward to evolving this particular framework and taking it forward. Third is the impact aspect of it. Uh, now, there is technology convergence, there's a time to maturity, but what about the impact? And as I uh, alluded to earlier, one, the, the impact is not restrained to one organization. It's actually much broader across the sector, adjacent in terms of the value chain of that particular sector. And we are also looking at a lot of uh, economic impact at the India level. Uh, it might not just stay at that, right? There's going to be a much bigger play for the software and the hardware solutions providers here. Uh, and the way uh, that will impact not just the domestic consumption of these um, uh, solutions, but also the global exports of these solutions will be very interesting to watch for. So that's uh, roughly the aim behind this first version of TechScope, which is giving the end user community, the end user sectors, a view of what are some of the most critical um, technological solutions that they should be betting their digital investments on. Right, uh, I think that's very interesting and uh, that's uh, that lays out the entire themes and the, the, the true meaning of what TechScope framework means. And I want to continue with the question and ask Vandana if you can, you know, Vandana, why do you think it's so important for organizations to be prepared uh, for, for such a framework? What's the need of it? Maybe uh, some uh, points around that. Sure, sure. Thanks, Naman. Thanks for that question. So, you know, as we know that 70% of the tech companies are already increasing their digital investments this year. Of course, post COVID, we have seen that resurgence in digital, uh, you know, technologies and digital investments. So companies are looking at various avenues to deploy these investments. And, you know, we know that digital technologies are the cornerstone for any company. And as Namita has already, you know, also shared, so, you know, TechScope really provides these companies a list of 25 top technology themes or solutions, as we have mentioned. And, you know, these solutions are going to have considerable economic and industrial impact as well in the coming years. So based on the current maturity of the in the country and also this will also tell the companies what they should be pri prioritizing and, uh, you know, looking after in the immediate future as well as the long term as well. So the themes that we have selected in TechScope are, uh, you know, based on NASCOM's patented weighted multi-factor assessment methodology. And this has been done across various parameters. So, you know, it is important, you know, why should organizations be prepared? You know, organizations should be prepared and be on the lookout and also invest in these themes and solutions because they are expected to have increased traction and investments and ongoing research as well. So this is going to create a deep impact across the entire value chain and of course, you know, impact the economy as a whole as well. So these, you know, themes are, you know, at least expected to deliver impactfully on at least three out of the four objectives, which is number one, bring more FDI, number two, increase consumption, number three, accelerate business growth, and four, of course, you know, deliver substantially towards India's digital economy maturity. So yes, definitely the organization should be prepared and be on the lookout and, you know, follow and uh, monitor these solutions and themes very closely. So, yeah. And uh, Bandev, you want to add something to what, uh, uh, you know, Vandana just said and uh, maybe focus a little bit on the technologies that have the highest potential and what else can we look out for in the next five years? Because that's an that's a important question. What's what the future holds for us? I think that that will be really nice to understand. Uh, thanks, Naman. Um, so before I address your specific question, I'd just like to add a few uh, pointers to what uh, Namita has already covered. So uh, you know, I mean, this is this this is in regards to what is the starting point for TechScope uh, from NASCOM or NASCOM's point of view. So uh, you know. From our, uh, you know, stakeholder point of view, for example, we have business decision makers or technology leaders who are looking for uh, investment channels, as Vandana has mentioned. And this is obviously backed by uh, um, 
a, a large increment in terms of digital spending this year. Um, the idea behind this tech scope is to you know, discern, uh, help the leaders discern and separate hype from potential. So Namita has mentioned, for example, uh, the various parameters on the basis of which we have rated or scored these uh, different solution areas, which are basically amalgamation or overlap of various individual technology areas. So understanding the timeline and the impact of these, as she has mentioned, in three years, three to five years, and uh, five to 10 years and more. Um, on the other side, I, I personally feel this can probably help uh, tech leaders and decision uh, makers to uh, manage the risk of technology adoption. So what is happening is uh, there are a lot of new technologies um, which are coming up. Some of them uh, can be over overhyped uh, and uh, sometimes it becomes difficult for the decision makers to uh, separate the ones which have the uh, which are expected to have the maximum potential within not only within their business but also within the supply chain of the within the same industry vertical. So um, looking at this particular document and the positioning of the various technology solutions or slash groups, um, a decision maker will be able to uh, understand uh, where um, uh, the potential for investments lie and uh, he, uh, he should be able to take uh, the decision in terms of uh, how to uh, manage the risk emanating out of adopting. So every new uh, investment in a new technology uh, has its own share of risks. For example, we know that in artificial intelligence, machine learning, there's a large number of ML models which are coming into in, into the fore. And this has been, you know, um, uh, also this has also been the result of the pandemic. Uh, but a but a company which is yet to start, uh, you know, its AI journey, which is still at the level of the uh, POC, it becomes very difficult to choose uh, what is the starting point. Sometimes they're at a loss of ideas. Uh, and uh, proper frameworks. So looking at this particular, uh, you know, tech, tech scope uh, that uh, NASCOM is coming out with, they'll be able to manage, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, manage the idea behind which uh, the organizations or, or, or uh, their particular department will be able to focus on in the, in the near term to uh, medium term. So this is uh, one area. Uh, and um, as you might be aware that we are coming up with a comprehensive assessment of each of those technologies, uh, which Vandana has mentioned, 25 of them, uh, that have the potential to be commercially viable. So I think the operative part here is commercially viable because a lot of technologies are over or overhyped and uh, sometimes it becomes difficult to understand, you know, uh, which are the technologies that can provide the maximum return on investment. So from a decision making perspective, I think tech scope is on a sound footing. So this is the idea behind uh, the tech scope and you know what Namita has already mentioned. Um, uh, coming back to your question, uh, Naman, um, from a timeline perspective, uh, there are two uh, specific uh, uh, areas, which is like less than three years, which we term as near term, and three to five years, which is like medium term. So we have categorized the various uh, technology solutions uh, on the basis of uh, immediacy or uh, the time taken or the uh, expected time taken to become fully mature in terms of not only adoption, but also in terms of the kind of impact is expected to have on the industry. Uh, so um, uh, if you look uh, look at it from a sector perspective, we see that retail and consumer products um, uh, has within its realm a lot of technologies or new technology areas, for example, uh, digital customer experience or omnichannel experience, for example, direct to customer. So these are some of the technologies within retail uh, which can uh, be expected to reach maturity in a short period of time or in the short term. Um, uh, apart from this, within uh, AI, um, uh, there is this uh, the the new report that we have uh, you know recently launched, which is AI as a service. So we see a lot of traction uh, where smaller companies or uh, small and medium businesses are trying to accelerate uh, their AI adoption journeys. So with the uh, concept of ML ops and auto ML. Uh, and ready, uh, ready to use off the shelf uh, machine learning tools. So, um, so that is one area like AI as a service and uh, machine learning ops. Um, from our research, we understood that AI ops and uh, uh, ML ops, for example, uh, is going to be the core of uh, AI adoption journeys. And the model that is uh, uh, evolving is as a service model. So we have done a, 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 in a comprehensive research on that. So that is another area or another technology area which is going to see traction in the, uh, in the short term.
Vyanaman. But uh, that is across uh, obviously uh, uh, various industry verticals that includes retail, that includes healthcare, that includes uh, industrial, uh, industrial and automotive, uh, as well as banking and financial services. Right, right. Yeah. Thanks. So that's this quite comprehensive. I mean, if I if we talk about the list, the list can go on. I mean, there are further more things that can be added to it. So I think uh, that really sums it up. Uh, so uh, thank you so much, uh, Bandev. Uh, with this, we come to the end of today's discussion. Thank you, Namita, Vandana, and Bandev for joining me. Uh, that's it from our NASCOM roundtable discussions. Stay tuned for more insightful sessions and discussions on the latest trends happening in the Indian tech industry with NASCOM Insights YouTube channel. Please like, share and subscribe. Till then, it's goodbye from everyone here at NASCOM Insights. Take care. Thanks, Sam. Thank Take you. Care. Thank you.